somebody give God glory this morning. Wherever you are, just begin to lift your hands and begin to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, you've been good to us. God, we honor you. God, we bless you. There's nobody like you. There's power in the name of Jesus. I said there's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to open up your mouth and declare the name of Jesus wherever you are. <laughs> and watch things begin to change.
trouble surround me I didn't have to despair Cause Lord you told me That you'd be right there It seems like all my problems They had just begun I didn't have to worry no more Somebody call on the name Jesus. Somebody call on the name Jesus. My deliverer Jesus. My burden bearer Jesus. My heavy load shower Jesus. Come on Jesus. Oh Jesus. 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 Jesus, there is something about your name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. like the fragrance oh. after the rain. And all heaven and earth proclaim there is something about your name, Jesus. I, I, I wonder if it anybody out there can say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there is something about your name. When, when I call that name, I, 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 I feel better when I call that name. Demons begin to tremble. When I call that name, I feel like I have overcoming power. That name Jesus brings healing. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. There's healing, salvation, and deliverance in the name Jesus. Oh, it's another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in today. This is a good day. Yes, yes, yes. There is a word from the Lord. In the book of Psalms, the 73rd chapter and the second verse, 
We're going to talk for a few moments this morning. We'll not hold you long. It says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. I, I, I want to talk about this morning, I almost gave up. I, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I almost gave up. Somebody almost threw in the towel. Somebody almost went back. If it had not been for the grace and the mercy of God and your mind stayed on him who keeps your mind in perfect peace, you would have gave up. There is a spirit that will cause you to be surmounted and encompassed with so many problems from looking at the outside world that you will give up. The law of physics says anything that's in motion, if obstacles from the outside interfere with it, it will stop it and stagnate it. But if anything is stagnated, then obstacles from the outside will cause it to stay stagnated. It's just a law of physics. And, and the law of physics is when something starts moving it and it's energized, and if something comes from the outside and messes with it, it will stop it from moving. I've seen people start out with things. They'll be so energized. They will be so excited. I'm glad about this position. I'm glad about this promotion. I'm glad about coming and giving my life to Christ. I'm glad that I had myself, my children, and everybody to join church. You're so excited, you're energetic, and you start to move in, but some outside force comes in and take away all that energy and cause you to be stagnated. And you want to throw up your hands. And you want to say, I give up. And I'm talking to somebody that, that could tell somebody I've been there, I've done that. There are some things that came my way. I almost gave up. But his grace and his mercy, it kept me. This psalm, this psalm is written by Asaph. But let me tell you that the, the, the book of Psalm was written by several writers. David wrote 73 of the Psalms. The, the, the sons of Korah wrote 12 of the Psalms. Yes, yes, yes. Solomon, he wrote 10 of the Psalms. Asaph, he wrote 6 of the Psalms. And Moses wrote one Psalm, Psalms 90. Uh, Heman wrote one Psalm, 87. And, 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 Ethan wrote one Psalm, 88, but there are some that's unaccounted for. But from reading them, I kind of gave them over to David because they had a lot of praise in them and had a lot of breakthrough stuff and stuff he came out of. I, I just throw them back in David's lap. You can add to that 73. But theologians will tell you he wrote 73. They don't know who wrote the other ones after the sons of Korah, after Solomon, after Asaph, after Heman, after Ethan. They don't know who wrote the rest, but I feel like 
in my spirit that David wrote. But then you have to know the person, you have to know the situation. When, when people write, then you have to understand what they're writing from. Why did he write what he wrote? Asaph wrote Psalm 73. Asaph was in Chronicles, the 16th chapter, 16th chapter, he was the minister of music. He was the leader of the tabernacle, the temple choir. He was, a, he, he, he was the leader. Asap was the leader of the choir. He, he was the one who sung in the synagogue, in the temple, to lead the choir in worship, to, to set an environment that would be conducive for the anointing of God to flow in the synagogue, in the temple. He was the one responsible for having the spirit to move in and the impartation of the anointing of God begin to impart from the priest. Yes, Asaph. You know when God gives you something and he gives you something to do, it ain't always easy. It's always some resistance. And here he is singing and worshiping in the temple. But I, I, I want you to go with me this morning because the, the temple committee has summoned you and I to come and shadow ASAP. Here we are. We're going to shadow ASAP this morning. I need you to open your mind and travel with me with ASAP. We're going to ASAP's home. Here we are coming to ASAP's home. Yes, yes. ASAP greets us. Good morning. Come on in. We come in and sit down and say, have a seat. I'm getting ready. This is my routine before I go down to the temple every day. I have to look for me a meager means of breakfast before I go down to the temple. I have to get things in order here at my house. I got to get things straightened out. Don't have everything that I want. But I do have what I need. But I, I, I need you to shadow me and you follow me. And as they begin to leave and walk out the door, they're walking. Can you imagine yourself walking with ASAP this morning? You're going to learn something. Walking with ASAP. He's walking on his way to the temple. He stops at a coffee shop. People are speaking to us as we walk before we get to the coffee shop. They're speaking, hello, how you doing? They're speaking to Asaph. Gets in the coffee shop. He says, I sit here for a moment. But as we're walking, you have to back up because as we're walking, he says, he's got a slow step. He said, I, I have to push myself to go to the temple every day because I got some sickness in my body, my legs. That I'm, I don't have the help I used to have. I, I, I'm walking, he's walking slowly. People speaking. He gets to the coffee shop and he sits down. We're still seeing people come and people come in and speak to him, saying, God is still God. God is still good. God is good all the time. I said, yes, he's good. But on the inside of him, he's hurting, he's in pain and he's stressed. And looking at him. But then the first thing we're going to learn from ASAP this morning is it matters what you've been taught. It matters what you were taught as a child. What you are taught every day, it matters. Because in Psalm 73, in verse 1, he says, God, he says, not just God, 
God. He said, truly, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as of a clean heart. It matters what you've been taught. I, I, I just look back over my life and I think about my mom. I thank God. I, I, I wonder, is it anybody in here uh, out there that thank God for what you was taught? My mama taught me how to pray. My mom taught me the word of God. My, it matters what you've been taught. And see, some of us, we had not been taught. We're not teaching our children anything. Only thing they're being taught is the words to the lyrics of Cardi B's song. A little Wayne. What are you teaching your children? It matters what you're being taught. What you've been taught as you're bringing your children up is going to matter. It matters what you've been taught. I thank God for my Sunday school teachers. Taught us the word of God. You know why he said truly God is good to Israel? Because he was taught that God blessed Abraham's seed. God blessed Israel. God uh, blessed Moses to lead the children of, of, of Israel out of Egypt. It mattered what he had been taught. God blessed. He knew the word of God because he was taught it. You need to understand today it matters what you are being taught. Because he said, truly, God, I know from being taught, God is good to Israel. I, I wonder how many out there, and somebody said, well, well, Pastor Hare, I've I, 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 I never been taught nothing. Somebody just invited me to church. Let me tell you nature. I'll let you know that God is good. Nobody don't have to teach you. You woke up this morning. You saw the bright sun shine. It was God that did it. It was God that brought the sun up. You can look at nature. You can look at the world and see that God is good. Nobody don't have to tell you God is good because it was him that woke you up this morning. You got to know that somebody is in control of this universe. He's not operating on his own. You have no excuse. I wonder, does anybody out there know he woke you up this morning? If he woke you up this morning, he started you on your way, you ought to have a praise in your life. You ought to have a thank you, Jesus, because it matters. It matters. I, I, I know for a fact. It, it told me every time you wake up, tell God thank you. It matters what you've been taught. Here they are sitting in the coffee shop. Here we are shouting ASAP, but we're in the coffee shop. We see a group of people pass by, waving. God is good. But then all of a sudden, there's another group come by that's dressed so fine. Gold changes, rings on their finger. Very arrogant, very conceited, healthy looking good they come by and everybody start looking strange they don't say anything they walks up to our table and they says what are y'all doing we following and shattering ASAP why are you shattering him they are very arrogant about it they know they got it going on. They know they got their health. They know they got money in their pocket. They know that they, they got the best of life, they think. So they say, they're they very confident and cocky about it. So what are y'all doing? Shouting ASAP. Well, we, we want to shatter him to learn. What you want to shatter him for? All he does is do the same thing every day, go down to that temple. Look at him. Look at him. He goes down there every day. If, 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 if it's so good what he's doing, then why ain't he well in his body? If it's so good what he's doing, why? He doesn't have money in his pocket. Why, 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 why his business have went down if, if, if what he's doing is so good? Why? He can't do what we are doing. Look at us. Are you following him? You following him is to no end. He's not, he, he not doing anything. 
Look at it. So it matters what you're being taught, but this mean more to me. It matters from experience. It matters more. When you experience something, it matters more. Sometimes you can teach children. You can teach them all, but until they get out there sometime, they'll walk away from your house. But experience becomes the best teacher. The prodigal son left his dad and said, I, I got this. He had been taught to go to church. Let me tell you the first step to backsliding is missing church. He had been taught to go to church, but he says, I, 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 I want the blessing, but I want to live the blessing because I want to go where I want to go. I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, and I want who I want to do it with. So I don't, I don't need your covering. I, I, I need to be on my own. Just give me my blessing. Let me monitor. My, don't you tell me when to come and when to go. But experience matters more. It matters what you've been taught. But experience matters more here is ASAP. Experiencing this and now it hits him. He throws up his hands. He's saying, here I am. I go to church every Sunday. I pay my tithes. I, 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 I sing. I usher in. And I, I pray so hard. I, sometimes I don't feel like going. I'm, I'm hurting in my body. Y'all saw me walking. I'm walking slow, but I, I make my way there. And when they call me, I come, I worship, I praise. And here they are making a mockery of me. And these people living good. They're driving good, eating good, dressing good. Here I am struggling. I've been giving my tithes, but they still got their job. I lost my job. They came against me and got rid of me. I lost my job, but they still have their job, and they're looking at me like I'm nobody. Yeah, you say you serve God. <laughs> what your God done for you? Asap is ready to throw his hands up. He said, God, what is going on here? These people, these people, don't, they don't love you. They don't care about you, but yet they are prospering, yet they look like we are dying, church folk dying, and like the hell raisers still living. The biggest hell raisers in the church stay alive. And your good people look like they leave. Good paying folk. Ain't God all right? Hell raisers still hanging around, giving you trouble. People in the street driving better. ASAP said, I almost, I almost threw in the towel. He's, he, he's, he's at, the, he at, the, he at the end of the rope. I can't handle no more. This is too much for me to handle. Here we are. We're with ASAP. We're, we're learning something. We're shattering him. We're learning something this morning. Right there in your home, you're learning something this morning because we're shattering ASAP. And guess what? Some of you are experiencing the same thing. And every time you think you're going to make your mind up to say, you know what? I'm going to watch Facebook Live this morning. I'm going to start going to church. when it But it seems like all hell is broken loose. Look like the people that they don't care. They don't watch live. They don't do nothing. It seems like they're doing better than you are. Oh, but then the next thing is, while well, we shout in ASAP, what God says matters most. What you talk matters, but what you experience is more. But what God says is more. And I, I, I'm, I'm out of here this morning. I am out of here on that last point. What God says matters most. I don't care what nobody else says. I don't care what things look like. What God says matters most. I don't care what's coming against you. I don't care how bad it seems. But if you stand on the counsel of God, and that is his word, what God says matters most out of anything that can happen in your life what God says matters most. I need you to put that in your spirit. To start reading the word of God and say what God says matters most. Because in that very 14th 
verse. I'm going on home. In that 14th verse, he said, for all, all day long, I've been plagued. This thing, this thing, just leave it right there. This thing has plagued me. It's plagued me when I get home. I go to church and I sing. I praise God. I give. I, I, I do what I need to do if somebody needs help. I give them a help in a hand. This thing has been plaguing me on the inside and chasing me every morning. Every morning I wake up. It takes everything in your body to get up. When you're looking and seeing like you're doing everything for God, you don't feel like combing your hair. It's a chasing me every morning to look at myself in the mirror and say, can you make another day? I wonder, is it anybody out there feel that way that you want to understand? Can I make another day, Pastor Hare? You're preaching here on Sunday morning, but you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what, what the situation is in my life because I try. I do the best I can, but it seems like everything is against me. It plagues me in my spirit. It chases me every morning. Do you not know, Pastor Hare, what it takes for me even? I'm, 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 I know I'm a Christian. I know I got saved, but it chases me every morning just to get up and comb my hair and put clothes on. Sometimes I, I just throw a head rag on. Sometimes I, I don't put no makeup on. I don't do anything. I just, I just put on something and run to the store and come back because I just don't feel like even seeing people. I don't even feel like doing anything. I don't, I don't feel like. But in verse 15, he says, if I say, I'm going to say this. Now, because I know I go to church every Sunday. If I say, I'm going to get up in front of the church and testify that I got all these issues going on in my life, then I'm going to offend the generations of God's children. So I got to keep this ball up on the inside of me, doing my job, singing, ministering, preaching, teaching, or whatever you do. If I say this, it's going to hurt somebody. If I say this, it's going to hurt the generation that said what God can do, that, brought, that was brought out of the land of Israel. If I say this, I'm going to make somebody stumble. So now I got to sit here and help all this stuff inside of me because I got some people shouting with me right here in this coffee shop. Asaph says, I can't, I can't say it. See, woman of God, man of God, son and daughter of God, keep it to yourself. You can't say it because you're going to offend generations. Don't, don't talk negative to nobody. Don't say, uh, the, the devil already tell them what they can't be and what they can't have who they can't be, and they can't do this, and they can't do that. And, he, and you, as somebody that they look up to, ASAP, you're the leader of the choir. You can't go there. ASAP, you sing every Sunday morning. You can't, Pastor Harold, you preach every Sunday morning. You can't go there, even though sometimes on the inside of you, there's some things, you have some problems. And guess what? And a lot of times the problem's not with me. It's problem with people that they say they love you. That's why Jeremiah almost gave up. In Jeremiah 20 and 10, Jeremiah said, you know what, I, I, if I heard the defaming of many fear on every side report, every time I preach, I, I had a word from God, but I heard all these folk that's shaking my hand but stabbing me in my back. We were, we're going to report it. He ain't no good. They running here and there saying this about him. All my familiar Watch for my halting. The people I knew, this ain't no people on the outside. This people on the inside. I, 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 I came to the church, Pastor Hare, because I want to leave backstabbing folks. I came in the church, and I got to the church, the same folks at church. Are y'all hearing me this morning? The same people was at the church. I left the world to not be backstabbed, but when I got to the church, I found the same folks that came in the church also. He said, all my familiar watched for my halting, saying perhaps he will be enticed. 
Perhaps he's going to go down. Perhaps we talk about him, he'll shut up. Perhaps he won't. We shall prevail against him. We're going to make him stop. He's he not going to sing no more. He's not going to preach no more. She's not going to give no more. She's not going to love no more. She's going to leave the church because we're going to prevail against him and we shall take our revenge on him. See, the devil want to take revenge on you. The devil wants you to give up so he can say, I got the revenge. Boy, you better listen to that word this morning because I'm speaking to somebody right out there that the devil is trying to make you stop because he want to get revenge over you. And it's somebody that you're familiar with. See, you're not going to hurt as much from the outside world. But when it's somebody that you're familiar with, that you eat the last supper with, break bread and drink wine with, sit at the same table. Uh, uh, David said, I wasn't wounded in the house of my enemy. I was wounded in the house of my friends. They wanted to see me halted. They want to perhaps keep me from doing what I'm doing. And Asaph said, these folks speaking to me every morning, but now they come here and now they say, what's, what's the use of you doing what you're doing? Look at us. Why don't you give up church? Why don't you stop doing what you're doing, Asaph? But I heard Asaph in that 17th verse. I heard Asaph say these words. He said, until I went, hey, come on somebody. He said, until my mind got right. I, I was messed up. Back up to 16, just for a second, so we could just show you just something. When I thought to know this, <laughs> when, 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 I, when, I, when I really thought and analyzed it and being taught the word of God, then experienced the people coming against me and I knew the word of God and I should have known I was going to have trouble. He said, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. But then he said, until I went, until we began to get a sanctuary mind. Sanctuary is a place where you leave everything from the world outside. I got to get, a, if you want to live for God, you got to get a sanctuary mind. When you wake up in the morning, have a sanctuary mind. When you go to bed at night, have a sanctuary mind. Everything you do for God, even if you're in the church, I don't care who talks about me. I don't care who, who, who don't like me. See, when you have a sanctuary mind, they don't bother you. He said, until I thought to know this, I, got, I, I entered the sanctuary of God. See, you got to get in a place so you can think about God and the ways of God, then I understood. I, I was about to give up. I almost gave up. But when I got in the sanctuary, I understood. Went on in some person, he said that they got he, he got them on a slippery edge. See, some folks on a slippery edge and don't know it. They got one foot on a banana pillar and one in the grave. They, they, they on a slippery, he said, they, and one, he said it, he said it, they, they, they on a slippery edge. Surely thou didn't set them in a slippery place. That's some folk. They think they got it going on, but they in a slippery place. Oh. <laughs> he said, thou casted them down. God gonna, God got it this in control. When I thought to know this, I understand now when I got in the sanctuary, that God got everything in control, that the people that I'm looking at and comparing myself with, they in a slippery place. Somebody shout slippery, it's slippery. I, 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 I would rather be without and be in a steadfast place than be with on a slippery place. Yes, 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 yes. ASAP, what it is that made you think? Say, when I thought about the counsel of God, all I need is the counsel of God. I'm going to follow his counsel. I made up my mind 
that I'm not going to follow the counsel of the ungodly. I'm neither going to look at what the world got going on. I'm going to look at what God has said in his word. Mm, on last Sunday, I told you, be not weary in well-doing. For a due season, you're going to reap if you don't, if you don't give up. You see, oh Lord, the devil wants you to throw in the towel. He wants you focused on everything. Oh Lord. But what the Lord is doing in your life. Mm, Sometimes you gotta go back on what you've been taught. Oh Lord. If you've been taught, uh, the Lord will make a way out of no way. Then. You need to hold on to what you've been taught. Ain't God all right? But uh, sometimes you got to go back and look back over your life and say, I got to learn from my experience. Oh, Lord, he, he, he brought me through this Surely, yeah, he gonna bring me through that. Ain't God all right? He brought me out. No, he didn't bring me out uh, for me to stop right here. Ooh, I can't look at uh, nobody else. Uh, I gotta look at uh, what God has done for me. Yeah, he saved my soul. Yes, he did. I heard Asap say, surely, even though I'm going through, surely, God is good to Israel in the midst of my struggle. God is still good. Can anybody say he's good? You right out there. Can you say he's good? I don't know about you, but I made up my mind that God is good. I don't look at the Joneses. I just look at you call me. You equip me what I don't have, I don't need, because I know you're going to supply all of my needs according to your riches in glory. I feel like preaching, yeah, I heard Asap said, you need to trust in the Lord. I don't know. I made up my mind. I cried. I complained. But I done got in the sanctuary. My mind has changed. I got a new outlook. I got joy. Even though they're talking about me. I got peace. Even I'm being lying on. I heard Jeremiah say, Well, Jeremiah, did you give up? He said, I wanted to quit. I went somewhere. I got in a cave. I began to sit down. But something called the Word of God. It was like fire set up in my bones. Did anybody out there know you can't sit down when God has blessed your life? You can't stop doing what you're doing when God has blessed your soul. If you heal your body, 
You can't stop now. Keep on giving for God. Keep on preaching for God. Keep on serving the community. Keep on doing your outreach. Don't let nobody stop you. They gonna talk negative when you're working in the house of God. They'll tell you you're just doing it for the preacher. But you need to let them know my mind is on the sanctuary. I'm in the sanctuary. I don't see man. I look beyond man. I see God working. He working through me. He work through you. You need to let him use you. You need to let him use you. Ain't God all right? As I go on to close, Jesus, we could have quit y'all when he was hanging on that old rugged cross. I'm going to take him to the cross. He was hanging on that old rugged cross. He saw people that was in the temple selling, doing wrong. He saw people hitting him that didn't deserve to hit him. They was living like hell. He was living for God. He could have quit on the cross, but he stayed right there. Can anybody hear me out there? He stayed right there. Hung on that cross. Oh, yes, he did. He stayed right there. Hung right there. He didn't quit, y'all. Why he didn't quit? Uh, he looked for the joy that was set before him. He looked for the things that was more important than uh, that. Ain't God all right? He stayed right there. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah, don't you quit, don't you quit, you almost about to throw in the towel, don't throw it in, hold on, hold on, to God's unchanging hand, every day, every day, gonna be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. As I go to my seat, as I go to my seat, I heard a poem. It said when things go wrong as they sometimes will when the road you're tugging seems all uphill when the funds are low and the debt get high you wanna <laughs> want to smile but you wanna cry when all is pressing you down a bit rest if you must but don't you quit <laughs> ain't God all right <laughs> he said these words uh, said life is strange <laughs> with his twists and turns <laughs> but when everyone of us sometimes learn <laughs> and many a failures comes about <laughs> when we might have won <laughs> if we had stuck it out <laughs> he don't give up Though the pace seems slow, you may succeed with another blow. <laughs> the devil might give you a blow, <laughs> but if we just hold on, somebody say, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't you give up. I ride it and I almost shot right where you are. Jump on that devil. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I almost gave up. Oh, left your hands right where you are and worship with us. Come on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I I'm talking to you this morning. I felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. My problems yeah. had me bound. Oh, no. Depression quit me down. Oh. But God held me close. So I would. God's mercies kept me, so I wouldn't let go. I almost gave up. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see it. The devil really had me. Oh, yeah. But Jesus came and grabbed me. He oh. held me close. Oh, he held you so close. I wouldn't let go. I want to see anybody out there know he held you close. Right there in your home. It was his mercy. So I wouldn't let go. Oh, I don't know about you, but it was his mercy. So I. Thank you, Lord. 